Okay. David, you keep uh, the deal on the chat, all right? Copy that. All right, champions, blessings, blessings, blessings. Here we are with uh, Daniel Adams on YouTube Live. There's going to be some fire, fire, fire tonight. Uh, uh, we're we're, we're going to uh, uh, dig into some deep stuff, and, and we're going to throw demons out. We're, 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 we're going to make the, the, the demons, the, this is the worst day of their year. We just started out, and, and uh, uh, let, let the fire go. We're going to just flow, me and Daniel, and uh, uh, we have not anything for to say. Maybe the end, we can have some guys come in, and Daniel will pray for you. And uh, that, that, that'll that make uh, make you excited. So stick with it. And if you have questions, pop them in there. And uh, we can, uh, we'll try to interject them right in the conversation. But hey, Daniel, blessings on you, champion. Thank you for coming on. This is going to be some fire. <laughs> Hallelujah, man. It's good to be with, here with you, Art, man. I love you, man. It's going to yeah, be uh, 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 Daniel and, 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 and me go back a long time. But I didn't know it, but uh, uh, this, this guy's, uh, uh, you guys know him. Uh, he, he, he's an amazing man of God, and he's got a lot of fire in him. But uh, uh, I didn't know it, but he knew me before uh, I, I on the Internet when he first started. And, and, it, and so we, we kind of hook up, you know, and, and so it's good. It's really good. Yeah, it is good. It's it's crazy how how things how things work out. Just for you guys watching, so you know, I did see Art years and years ago, even before I was on YouTube. A lot of people don't know that Art Art's been going after this thing for a long, long time. I believe Art, you're forty years old, right? You're probably right. I'm forty. <laughs> <laughs> guys, if there's anybody on this earth that's like Moses, is this man right here? And he's been like this even from the time I've started watching him. To now, this guy has been on fire and he's been running hard. He's a definitely a general of the faith. I don't know. I don't know. I just share it. By the way, I just shared this on my page and everything. So it's, you're going to have some people coming on here. So you guys that are coming on as you're watching this, make sure that you definitely subscribe to this man. He's been forerunning. We talk about the forerunners here at the Supernatural Life, but Art has been forerunning for a long time. Anytime I get with Art, I laugh and cry. And I'm not even trying to. This man, is, his joy is contagious. It is tremendous, <laughs> tremendously contagious. So, all right, I'm, I'm honored to be here, man. And I just want to say thank you because it was in 2013. I ran into uh, seeing you and other people on YouTube that were pioneering early days. And a lot of the people that started out with you aren't on YouTube the same way anymore. You know, you you were in those that that generation of starting all of this and somehow you've lasted. So I just uh, I'm just glad that you're still in here with us, man, in this generation and uh, just pushing through. Hey, yeah, yeah, you know, and, and, I, and I, I mentioned to everyone, and, and it's not something what you said this, but my deal of Christianity, uh, and I said, a mark of a Christian is he never, ever quits. You know, good times, bad times, you stay through, and, and I'll bet you Daniel has some testimonies of that. You've got, uh, if you think everything's going to be sweet, uh, you better uh, pack your bags, go home early, because this is a war, but you can win this war and have joy doing it. So, uh, yeah, hey, Daniel, why don't you tell everybody how, how you got involved in this and uh, how you got started out? And because I'm sure everybody wants to know. Yeah, I, I'll condense it. I mean, my testimony is about this long and it's growing every day. You know? <laughs> and I'm sure yours has grown a lot, too. Oh, but, yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I just, you know, grew up in a broken family, rebellious, had a child at a young age. Um, didn't really grow up in the church. I wasn't I wasn't in the church system, so I didn't understand anything. Um, I was a correctional officer early in life. I became a sheriff's deputy. Also, after that, I decided to become a cage fighter. I started actually cage fighting as a law enforcement officer. Through all this, God was speaking to me. I actually gave my life to Christ in December of 1999. A Baptist church pastor came in with me and my dad. Wow, and my 1999. Yeah, 1999. And I asked Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. And um, after that, I, you know, I went through my rebellious years because I just said the prayer of salvation. Nobody taught me how to live like a Christian, you know. So anyway, I lived the life. I had a child at a young age, um, went through a divorce. You know, divorce was in my family. I absolutely hate divorce. I, I, but, you know, that's the thing about coming from a broken family. It teaches you how to be broken, right? So I went yep. through brokenness. I ended up in Florida with my, uh, with my ex now at the time. I uh, 
ended up in Florida and I pursued cage fighting. And in the midst of cage fighting, the same Bible that I received. So I received a Bible when I was baptized that I just carried with me everywhere. You know, I didn't realize why I was carrying it. I remember I was going to have my first pro fight. And uh, when I was about to have my first pro fight, it fell through. A couple other fights fell through. And I got sick with a bacterial infection in my lungs. And if you know anything about fighting, you're not going to go into a fight at two, 10%. You got to go in there at 100%, right? Yeah. You want to make sure that you're going to win or as close as you can get to it. So I canceled the fight. I was laying in my bed. I opened my Bible. And the word of God literally came alive to me. And I remember I went to YouTube at that time. This was probably around 2011, 20, well, it was about 2012. It was around the end of 2012. I went and I opened the Bible and I started looking, went to YouTube and I was listening to this song in the presence of God encountered me, changed my heart, couldn't fight anymore, couldn't punch people in the face like I used to. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't do it, man. God completely just wrecked me and I couldn't do it. And later on, as time goes on, I ended up a uh, older deliverance minister. He rest, you know, may his soul rest in peace. He's not with us anymore. He's an old mentor of mine. He's passed away, but he was a deliverance minister. He found me as a personal trainer because I became a personal trainer after a cage fighter. And he brings me these books about this big on deliverance. And I'm like, what is this stuff, man? I didn't know anything about it. You know, I'd been attacked by the demons, but I'd never knew how I could cast out demons. So he brings me a book. I go into work, into studies on the demonic realm, how it wow. works and operates, how sickness is attached to it and stuff like that. And this man of God lays hands on me one day and says, I want to, I want to baptize you in the Holy spirit. So he lays hands on me, this deliverance minister, nothing happens. This is probably around 2013. And um, I remember one day I was upset because nothing happened. I thought when he was laying hands on me, I was going to speak in tongues and catch on fire, but nothing happened. Absolutely nothing. I was full of pride though. So I couldn't receive anything. So one day I'm in my shower and I remember I humbled myself and I said, Lord, if what this man did for me is really true, it has to come now because I can't keep doing what I'm doing. So I need a real encounter. I remember after that, I felt the electric power of God come on me and tongues. In the shower. In the shower, butt Come naked on. like I came out. Yeah. <laughs> he met me in the shower, vulnerable, undignified, you know? So I started speaking in tongues. And after that, man, it was it, it was like God just gave me, it was an instant power surge. You know, I, I had the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit on me and I went crazy. You know, I just started chasing everybody down on the streets that I could find. You know, I went that full-blown evangelistic young man just out there. I didn't have no character either. So I made a lot of mistakes, but that's pretty much, that's pretty much the, the, the meat of the beginning of my testimony. I mean, we could go in depth. I got a lot more, but that's how I encountered the Lord in a nutshell. And uh, that's how I got filled with the Holy spirit. And I've been running hard full-time, full-time ministry since 2013. Actually, I was a, as a personal trainer, I had my own gym and the way my gym got shut down and I got launched into full-time ministry. This is funny. A Jehovah witness woman had her hair client, in the chair, her hair client heard I was praying for people to be healed. She comes out of the room, comes over there. I lay hands on this woman. She gets smacked with the Holy Ghost. Come she on. Goes, she goes to the Jehovah. <laughs> the she, yeah, she goes to the Jehovah Witness woman and says, I just got touched by the power of God. Something came over me. I, something came out of me. The Jehovah Witness woman told, told her I manipulated her. The Jehovah Witness woman went to the lease agent and got me kicked out of my gym. So that's when I launched, I, I launched straight into full-time ministry. I ended up in the Reinhard Bonnke School of Evangelism. I served under a man of God as the, as the full-time evangelist of the house for three years. And he sent me out to the nations and everything. And that was, I was trained in Africa to preach. I was trained with the homeless. You know, I fed the homeless for a couple of years. That's how I was trained to preach art. You know, I, I was, I tell people I wasn't born on social media. Like people are today. I was born on the concrete. So I was, I'm, I'm, I'm concrete born, you know, I'm a, I was a, a ground stomper and I was talking about that earlier today. And you are too, you were born on the concrete. You were born. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. You know, you know, you know, like I know we don't need social media to survive, to preach the gospel. We don't need yeah. this. We, we just use it because God's made it available, but if it wasn't here, we'd still do the same thing today. So that's me in a nutshell, man. And that's, that's uh that's a little bit of my testimony. Well, that's good. You know, I, I have a guy Navy is on here tonight called Todd Medina. And Todd Medina was big in the 90s, a really a big name in uh, uh, on cage fighting. I don't know if you ever heard of him. Yeah, I remember. Mm -hmm. Well, well, you know, uh, Todd's going to come on tonight. You know, I've done several deliverances, God. But uh, but uh, but here's another cage fighter. Uh, I, I, I was teaching on the fire camp the night. Todd's in the in the class. And I'm teaching how to uh, lead people to Christ uh, instantly. And so I says, you know, when you go up on the streets, if you ask a guy for prayer, he says, no, I don't pray. Ask him if you'd like a blessing. 
and then uh, uh, the guy, uh, and then uh, they all say yes. And these, uh, and then I, I just say, uh, close your eyes and say, Jesus, I'm precious to you. And, and, and then the power will hit them and then lead them right to Christ and, and, and fill them with the Holy Spirit and just knock them down. So Todd's doing because he's, he's in the jails. The next night he's in the jails and, and teaching to a bunch of teenagers, you know, and uh, 24 of them, uh, 12 of them were up for murder charges. The other 12 are up for attempted murder charges. The, uh, the meeting, and they all like Todd because he's a fighter. That, that, oh, we want Todd, you know. And so uh, Todd goes in there and the meeting gets screwed up. So Todd, he says, uh, 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 why don't we, uh, they're trying to end the prayer. He's meeting. He says, oh, well, let's, why don't we end in a prayer? And all the officials said, we don't do that kind of stuff here. We don't do that stuff. You know, uh, that's a bunch of logic. And Todd says, well, what about a blessing then? And they say, yeah, that, uh, go ahead and do a blessing. Yeah, yeah, blessing, yeah. So Todd he has a close the right. Jesus, says, I'm praising you. Fills up with the Holy Ghost. Gets them all led to Christ. And they're all, <laughs> they all started weeping and crying. And, 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 and Todd says, 24 of them all weeping and crying. It's it. uh, they, they wrote Todd a, a note. And, and, and the, one of the grand, uh, mothers called it, your son did this. And he said, when you touch me, electricity went through my arm <laughs> and hit me. And he said, can you help my other son? He's on heroin. 20, he said, that's the most he's ever led to Christ. Wow. And I hope Todd's come on. I, I told him, he said, he'd like you to pray for him. And I said, hey, uh, to, to, if you're there Todd, tonight, you know, I hope he's on. So, uh, but it, yeah, you, you'll enjoy him, you know, so it'll be good. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> Well, uh, well, well, what, uh, what, what is, uh, uh, what can you uh, uh, tell tell uh, the, the champions out there that how they can uh, get started? Because a lot of them, uh, they they just uh, they they want to do it, but they get discouraged. You know, so many people quit, like you uh, like you were saying, mm -hmm. they don't keep at it. You know, uh, or they get uh, bored with it because sometimes, sometimes uh, it doesn't seem like it's working. And yeah. so they quit. Yeah. And so maybe you can share a little bit, uh, uh, start, give them some advice or something. Would that be all right? Sure. I should ask you that question, though. You, <laughs> yeah. I need to be interviewing you. Hey, listen, guys. <laughs> listen, guys. I'm bringing this man on my channel probably in a week or so. We're going to get this man. I need to ask him these. He's asking me these questions. I need to ask <laughs> him these questions. He knows how to stay on fire. At eight. You're 80 years old, right, Art? Yeah, I'm 80. I'm July 15th. Yeah. This this man's probably going to live the full 120. I don't think <laughs> I don't think he's going nowhere for a while. But man, yeah, the way I stay on fire personally, you know, I went through my seasons where I wanted to give up. I'm sure if we talk to you, you say the same thing. You know, it's yep. been times where it just seems so hard, but I've learned looking back, I'm appreciative because it's the refinement. You know, the Lord is building character. He's moving things out of your life, things that are going to hinder you if he doesn't remove it later on. It, now it'll hinder you later, you know. Um, I've had times, I even had a time in ministry where I was so rejected by Christians and by my, my, my Christians. Yeah. And, and faith leaders, man, people that were supposed to be mentors. I went through some serious seasons of rejection where, where I had thought sometimes of like, do I even want to be in this world anymore? I mean, I was getting attacked in my head and even other thoughts of murder. I'd have thoughts of murder come on me because I would want to take somebody out, you know, because I was hurt so bad. I had that cage fighter still in me in the wrong yeah, way. Yeah. Yes. So I had to, I had to have that thing crucified and crushed. And um, I've had, I've had times, man. I mean, I've, I've had times even in my family, I've had times in ministry where, where it just felt too hard. I had a time one time I was so hit so hard because of something I caused in my own life. I kind of destroyed my own family. Right. And I, I had times where I just said one day, I'll just play video games, eat ice cream and just live life. I really was having thoughts like that. I like, I'm done. I'm finished with it. So the only thing that really brought, brought me, out of that is is god's god's mercy and his love and his grace in the moments when i was going through that stuff i had choices I, I there was something in me art that would not ever allow me to just give up as much as <laughs> as much That's as the I, holy ghost man yeah, he got you. yeah as much as you know as much as you want to quit you can't it's like you can't it's like the bible says that once you're in his hand nobody can pluck you out that bible verse is real like 
I can't even think of not being in Christ as I don't understand how some people can, can say they love Jesus and then not love Jesus the next day. It's impossible. In my mind, it's impossible. Even if I turned into a bad guy, let's say, all right, I decide to be a heathenistic Christian right. I, out of my mouth. I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to deny Jesus. Even in some of the darkest seasons of my life, I never once said Jesus isn't real. I just got mad, you know? So when I've went through those seasons, the way that I've stayed, stayed, kept the fire or came out of that pit, you know, is I just, I come back to like how good he is and just, just go ahead and just acknowledging him, no matter what I'm going through, what I battled, I acknowledge him in all my ways. And I say, Lord, I'm going through this. You see what's going on. And I've told him before, all right, I'll say, you got to bring me out of this or I'm not going to make it. I've, I've talked to him like that before. I've said, if you don't bring me out of this situation, if you don't change something in my life then I'm not, I'm not going to make it. And he would always, my goodness, listen, this, our father would always come through. He, in the weirdest, wildest ways, I'll tell you this. I remember when I felt like I was ick about it. Like there was this Holy spirit that left me. Like I was gone. Wow. Right? You had that feel. I had that feeling that the presence of God had lifted me because I became a backsider. Right. So I like, he, it wasn't the same. I went from seeing miracle signs and wonders to nothing like dry, and I was just prophesying and preaching pretty much. You know, I didn't see no demons. I, I was working for the devil and saying I love God and trying to cast demons out. It didn't work work too well, you know. So, <laughs> so I remember I was sitting on the couch one day and I felt so absent, you know. And uh, I remember this is what really got me to be solid. I remember that presence that I had before. I remember it. I, I know the moment. I was on my couch and I felt his presence descend on me. I felt his power I felt everything come back. It was like the first time I got saved all over again. And when I felt that, I had so much revelation, so much understanding that I had missed for so many years and so long. And I was like, wow, it's back. You feel like a, you feel like you just transform. You know, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, something happens. You're not the same person. Like it says in the Bible in Romans 8, he'll give when you when you know the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will bring life into your mortal body. Like, you know, this, when the spirit comes upon you, it's like something just charges you up and you become alive, you know, and you're a great example of that. So I remember that moment. And when I felt that, I was like, I never, as long as I live, want to live a day without his presence. I understood what David said. I don't want to go anywhere. I can go into the depths of shell. I can go to the depths of hell and your presence is still there. So I don't want to go anywhere that his presence isn't, man. And his presence is on me. So I know anywhere I go, his presence has to be. Hallelujah. You know, you know it, it's kind of uh, uh, that, that story where you said you're on fire and then you go back. You know, I think it is a, 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 apartment, uh, a, a part of uh, building you into a structure because I, I, I was 10 years on fire and I went back into the pig pen. Mm -hmm. 10 years and I couldn't get out. <laughs> but uh, but <laughs> this time I realized before I never thought I could go back. Right, right. And, and, and that's the same prayer I say every day. God, if you don't stay with me today, I'll, yeah. I'll be a slime bag. <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't have no confidence. Now you learn, you know. <laughs> You're right. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's an amazing thing, the presence of God. But I think you need to. Uh, once you lose something and you realize you've had it, that you, when you get it back, it's precious to you and, and you, uh, you, you hold on to it more. You know, I thought I would just repent and be right back in, but I never got back. It took me a long time. It took me almost 10 years, you know, wow. and, and I, I went deep, you know, and, 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 and I was so on fire for God. And, and, and I remember that was in my forties. I had said just when I was 39, Daniel, I said this to God. I said, God, I've been on fire said, uh, for 10 years. Now I'm with 40, uh, uh, going through the 30s. I want to be double on fire for you through my 40s. I backslid my whole 40s. <laughs> the whole 40s. I mean, it was so bad. I mean, I didn't know if I'd ever get that presence back. Your whole 40. <laughs> The whole forties. <laughs> of course, I, I, I'm going to be I, laughing through this. I, I'm telling you, man, this guy has something on his life. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you tell me. So I, you know, I don't think you know. To me, 
I, I think, you know, we all, everybody likes to tell the warriors, but who has, uh, what kind of warriors in heaven if you don't have scars on you? You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is part of Chris. This is what makes you into a warrior. You don't become a warrior uh, by every, everything go right with you. No. <laughs> and we want to be warriors. Hey, uh, Daniel, what's, uh, 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 can you tell us about some of your, uh, uh, your, your deliverances that, uh, uh, that uh, stand out in your mind or uh, what went on with that? Man, you know what's funny? People ask me this question, right? They're like, what's the wildest? And I'm like, man, <laughs> I saw, I think last week, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. That's well, like, you, it's, you're going at it all the time. Oh, all, yeah. yeah, so like, you know, when you live a lifestyle, it's, I, you know, just to tell you, I, I've seen them, you know, when you've been in Africa, you know, it, like they, they hit the ground and they look like snakes, like they look like, like, right literal snakes you know like the the manifestations are a lot crazier over there sometimes you know um because the witchcrafts are but it's getting this way in america now so it's here but um the wildest one i mean i've seen a girl almost levitate you know during a deliverance i've seen the the black eyes i've seen fingers extend i've seen the tea thing i've seen uh the 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 voice like you know that it's not their voice i've seen a kind of some of those movie type looking uh deliverances at times um it's just been, I mean, honestly, Art, it's probably been thousands, man. It's probably up into thousands of deliverances I've been through and I've seen, you know, I've, I, you know, I stand in mass crowds. I stand in one on one. Yeah, I, it's crazy. Well, I, I, I've seen it where you go. Yeah. I just stand, I st I do it for the one. I'll do it for 4,000. I'll do it for 10,000. I'll just do it, you know? And uh, if we really sit here and really think about it, I'm like, man, I've, I've seen a lot. I've experienced a lot at 34, you know? And, um, but the wildest stuff, I mean, I've just seen, I've just seen, I've seen it all almost. I haven't seen them float across the sky or climb up the ceilings. I've seen the right. green. I've, now I do have one that I, that just came to my mind that I'll tell you. I okay. was in the, I, I, Yeah. It just came to my mind. I was in the Poconos. I don't know if you know where the Poconos is. That's a mountains uh, up in um, New York area. Okay. So the po Pocono mountains. And I was up there and a woman came. And when she got delivered, people, this is crazy. I got, it's proof. I have it on video. Um, I just got to remember where I put the video. It's, it's, in my old, <laughs> it's in my old ministry. This has been two, it was like 2015 when I did this, 16. Right. Uh, this, this woman came, she got deliverance and, and she started to, you know, vomit up. She wasn't just, she didn't just vomit up vomit art. She vomited an item that was put in her from when she was a little girl. Oh, come on. There was a solid witchcraft idol that was she swallowed when she was young. They made her swallow and it come out. It was like an earring or something like that that was in her stomach for all these years. And she got under the power of God and she spit this uh, spit this item up. My wife's in the chat. She, I don't know if she she wasn't there for that. No. Um, but anyway, the item come out in her vomit. It was right there. The people came and they were freaking out. They're like, this just came out of this woman. So that was a, that was a pretty wild, wild thing. When she got delivered, that thing was inside of her messing her body up, causing her all these infirmities and all these things. Uh, it was a Spanish lady that got delivered in the Poconos. So that was a, that. I just remembered that that just came back to my head. So that was a pretty, that was a pretty, uh, uh, I, I, I mean, I've okay. never, I've never, you know, of all the difference I've done, I've never I've seen that come out. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. God, I, I think you just prophesied for me. <laughs> we've, yeah. We've seen, I think, I think if I'm correct, I think when we go through the breaking of generational curses and they start vomiting that blood and stuff, I mean, you've seen, we, I think there's been times where parasites will show up in their blood, right. you, you know, uh, those you probably, I don't know if you've ever seen that where the, it's like almost wormy looking stuff mm -hmm. will come yes. out, will come out, will, will come out of the people that they've ate from there, where they've ate idol, uh, food sacrificed to idols, uh, or they know it and they've done it in their past or especially people that come from Hindu backgrounds and stuff like that. When they, when they get delivered, you see, you see all bugs, all kinds of stuff just come out of these people. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Hey, well, you know, it just, it just, uh, you're talking about levitation, uh, seeing a levitation. And, and I got up Sunday and gave a, levi a levitation testimony in church. You I really said, had, you I, had a levitation. A levitation testimony. You saw I, it. I'm going to give it a real, a levitation right. testimony. Anyway, last week at church, this gal walked by and I said, hey, lady, you want some prayer? She said, oh yeah, I just been diagnosed with a uh, Spanish lady. Uh, I just been diagnosed with a uh, uh, Parkinson's disease. I said, let me get in there. I'll pray for that thing. So I started praying for, her, you know, and I gave her three deep breaths of the Holy Spirit and the fire, fire, fire. 
and, and she starts going up and she <laughs> says, oh my goodness, I'm levitating, I'm levitating, I'm levitating, <laughs> so I'm flying, you guys see me flying, <laughs> well, we didn't see her flying, we did I'm flying, I'm flying, I'm in the air, I'm in the air. <laughs> <laughs> oh no yeah so i let her to christ got her speaking in tongues and, and then started casting out the demons you know i had to renounce uh 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 forgive people that, that offend her and then i said forgive yourself she said oh i can't do that i can't do that i said you'll do it and so she did it and she's oh that was a good one that was a good one <laughs> and then she says uh i said renounce revenge she says oh 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 i i hate a lot of people <laughs> Yeah, she, she was so expensive. It was so funny. She never levitated. But it was, I, I told everybody that is my levitation testimony. <laughs> <laughs> and I got her delivered and got us making a tongue on the streets. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. <laughs> that was just last week. So it was, when you said that, I've never seen a, oh, I have never seen a levitation either. But uh, she, she said she was levitating. She thought she was. <laughs> yeah, her spirit was, in lev her spirit was levitating yeah <laughs> that's crazy man yeah 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 hey david you got a question too you wanted to answer uh, uh daniel yes yeah i i do have some questions that i, I want to ask but once you're talking about levitation you're wrong you did see something that was almost like a levitation once at least the girl flew through the air real quick and um this oh, happened yeah. oh, <laughs> two years ago this, this sweet, young Christian girl, you know, couldn't possibly have any demons, comes up to Art and says, oh, could you please pray for my diabetes to go away? Art says, sure, yeah, I can pray for your diabetes to go away. And uh, he lays hands on her. He says, I command the diabetes to go right now in Jesus' name. And she went, ah, and flew through the air, like arms going like windmills. And I, I saw this from across the room. She was probably six or seven feet in the air lands on the ground somehow doesn't break her back and the chairs all the chairs went flying everywhere and uh you know so i don't know that wasn't quite a levitation but she flew across the room pretty bad so uh that's pretty close huh <laughs> yeah it is but i'm like daniel when you do so many you forget now david yeah, uh, yeah. he's young enough <laughs> He reminds me of the stuff he, he remembers it but i you know i forgot all about that <laughs> yeah that was a pretty good one um, well, yeah, I one of the questions I was, I was curious, and I think many of the viewers would want to know, is what were like some of your influences early on in deliverance? I know, like, for me, I can look back, and when I started deliverance, there's certain people I can point to, and how my thinking on spiritual warfare was influenced by different people. Like, um, were you influenced by Derek Prince, or Wynne Worley, or Bob Larson, or do you have any, you know, What's your impression of those people's ministries or if they had any influence on you at all? Oh, of course. Um, Derek Prince is, I think if you speak to anybody who does deliverance, you're going to hear two things. You're going to hear the name. Art, I think Art's the only person that's alive that could actually say they know Derek Prince. Derek <laughs> <laughs> so, Derek Don't get Prince. me laughing, Daniel. Derek, Derek Prince. You know, they shall expel demons. You know that book. I'm sure you've read that, right? Yeah, that was my that, Yep, that was my starter. Then, of course, you know the 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 one that beats them all is pigs in a parlor. You know. Yeah. Um, but what really got me going? So, so here's. Let me say this. Let me qualify my statements before I say this. I I'm okay with all methods of deliverance. Mm -hmm. um, I go by that Bible verse. I think it's in Mark nine. Y'all can correct me where he says, Hey, we see this guy over here casting out demons different from us. And Jesus says, right. hey, hold on, hold on. He's doing it in my name. He's with us. He just don't do it like you do it. So the, I've learned in deliverance. There's many methods because I, the thing, the thing that casts demons out is faith. So one of my biggest influences, I don't know if people know this. Uh, I learned from, and I studied and I looked at for years was TB Joshua. I really, really looked at that man in Nigeria, and I caught so much faith by watching. He provoked me so bad. I was like, this man right here is over here casting demons out with an incredible faith. I even learned – I even went and I, – I know his people. Like, I know his people to this day, some of the sons in the faith. And the system they have set up that makes these things manifest and happen is incredible. So there's a whole system I can tell you guys about later. 
But um, this man of God, man, he, he provoked me in the spirit so much. I would see the dude point towards cancers and cancers would burst out. Lumps were coming. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Bre breached babies are birthing out. I said, hold on. Either one or two things. Either this man is like really doing some bad juju or number two, this guy has some Holy Ghost understanding that we're lacking. And, you know, after he passed, you know, I studied him for so long. I was wanting to meet him after he passed. I went even harder looking at him. And I caught a lot of stuff he was doing by faith. And I tell you to this day, I start, I'm start. i starting to see a lot of those same attributes he carried uh, of deliverance and stuff is starting to manifest with me uh, as I'm doing ministry. And that comes from honor. A lot of people don't even understand honor brings anointing. If you honor mm -hmm. somebody, I honor Derek Prince, I honor TV Joshua, I honor uh, Frank and Ida, Ida Hammond, uh, Apostle Jan John Eckhart. He has some good stuff out there in his books. Uh, prayers that route demons. Uh, I, I've read um, some of his stuff. Who else out there? I've, I've read, my goodness, I've read so many, so many people in, in deliverance. But they're, they're some of my top ones. If you want to know my top ones, it's Derek Prince, uh, the Frank and Ida Hammond. Oh, um, be in health. Uh, Henry Wright. I was under his teachings for a while in Georgia. He teaches about how demons and sickness are combined. I, I learned right. from I learned from his spiritual son. So his spiritual son was the one that come and brought me the books. And uh, I learned wow. from, I learned from him. So that was my first thing, my first really first understanding of deliverance. Then it was Derek Prince. Then it was the pigs in the parlor book. Uh, and then it went to TV Joshua and learning from, from him. You, you know, that's interesting about uh, uh, TV Joshua. You know, I, I've watched him a lot and because I mean, there's no one on the planet did, did what he did. I mean, it's, it's just crazy. That simple. I mean, uh, yeah, and it's uh, and I used to watch him because they don't give that out though. Uh, I mean, he held. Uh, I, I, I I I I watched it, but now he does. Now it's given out. So yeah. so I'm I'm I know a lot of his people. Like I'm I'm really connected to a to 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 this group and these people. And I asked the don't worry when I get around to Mart, I am picking. I'm asking, and you know what? Come really, on. You know what really it come back to though. You know what they came back to? What? P prayer and faith. Hmm. Prayer and faith. Pr prayer and faith. Absolutely believing in God and 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 not doubting, having unwavering faith. It, I was like, what did he do? What's the secret? And it's just consecration. The world has to die. Like I learned that the world has to die. The more we don't realize this, and this is good for the viewers. A lot of times, what goes into here and here contaminates our spirit. And when our spirit is yeah. when our spirit is contaminated, it it it, it keep it actually drops our authority some. You know what I'm saying? And like it makes us have to, we, we got to go out. And I'm not saying it works, but we got to we got to go back and process who we are and what we are and who we come from, uh, because the world starts to contaminate us and mess with our faith. You know, that's why it, we got to keep our eye gates clear, our ear gates clear. What comes out of our mouths is not what goes in; it's what comes out that defiles us out of the mouth. Our mouth. What is coming out of our mouth can mess us up in the spirit. So I learned all these things. And then the process, to, you know, at the core of it, the reason we saw a lot of the strong things, he had an amazing prophetic gift, was what they did is in the beginning, Art, uh, they would um, clean, get everybody's stuff in the beginning. They would clean the basics up, forgiveness, repent, all that yeah. stuff. They'd work them through that. And then when you see them, they would come into the sanctuary and stuff. You saw they were prime. It's like prime in the pump. The pump's, right. been, the pump's been prime, and now let's go, let's go ahead and just pull whatever needs to come out is going to come out, you know? So the, it's the basic – they got a lot of the basics out the way in the front end, you know? You know, uh, uh, you know, I, I picked up – you ever remember you see T.B. Josh when he takes his hands like yeah. this? It's fake. Well, man. I started uh, using that. Yeah. Uh, and I kind of dropped it off, but, man, I would see people's uh, – I mean, I see their arms start going up and down. <laughs> Yeah, but so I know there's that man had something, and I, I think you, I if I got anything when you watch it, you you're kind of watching uh, it's going into your spirit. Uh huh. And, and uh, I, I believe that uh, it's it's interesting uh, that that you picked TB Joshua and, and that you're contacting those guys that they really hey I'm, I'm praying that uh, that but. Yeah, uh, then I, I'm just going to pray right now, Father. I just release on Daniel more and more and more. Open up yes. that door, Lord. Uh, uh, you know, God, we need more TV Joshua's in this world. 
Thank yeah. you, Father. The devil took him out, but Father, we need more. Unleash on Daniel whatever he got. Let him suck it up. Let him Come grow. On. Let him uh, prosper, Lord. Let him just stomp on every demon here. Let the cancer burst on TV, just like TV Joshua. Whoa. Come yeah. on. Now watch this, guys. You know why I'm humbled by this? Because we have Art Montgomery praying that for me. That's a sign of the Father. That's a sign of humility. But, but I will say this, Art. You got to give yourself some credit. I'm going to tell you, Art is probably one of the wildest evangelists. I'm not, I'm not even joking. I'm not even trying to, he's wild. He is absolutely wild. He has no fear. The dude will go out to anybody. He'll do anything. So I would say evangelistically, man, you, you got, you, you're, you're up there. You're pretty high. You're, you're, you're pretty high. Well, thank you. Thank you, champion. Thank you. Yeah, you're thank a general you. art. You're a general man. Well, uh, you know, uh, God, can, uh, God can use a, anyone, Daniel. I guess I, I say that that's my claim to fame, and yeah. God can use me, man. <laughs> yeah. You're so, you're so, you're so childlike, man, and and your stories. That's why I want to bring you on live with me because I want you to tell these stories. You got such rich, animated stories. You, they still are alive. That's what I like about you. There's, your stories are alive when you tell them. You know, it's amazing. Yeah, that, that, that's good. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, have, have, uh, what is uh, uh, to you? Uh, what is uh, where is where does the devil try to knock you out the most? You know, because he's always coming at at, at men. I mean, I mean, he's coming uh, like crazy. You know, and people, uh, and I, I think right now. Well, it's coming. Uh, uh, it's like tenfold, especially on the young men. For me, for me, for me personally, um, I, I in my most recent season, because you know we go through seasons of conquering things. You know? Right. Um, my most recent season in the past, like in the past, past when I went through my mess, it was lust, yeah. like every, like most men. So back in the day, um, right now. I just come through a season of getting annoyed by religious people is getting on. I, 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 they tried my patience and I would try to justify it by saying Jesus called them whitewashed tombs and, and, and tombs of dead bones, you know, and all that stuff. So I said, he did it. I'm going to, I'm going to do it too. You know? So I was, I was clapping back boy. And I said, hold on, I'm sounding like a cage fighter again over here. <laughs> so, 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 so my biggest struggle recently was the Pharisees. I don't want to call them Pharisees because some of them aren't, they're just ignorant. They don't have, you know, they don't have the right doctrine, but just people that disagree with the way that I've learned. So I had to really, I had to really just accept that, that people are, are going to mock. People are going to say what I'm doing is fake. They're going to try to say I hire actors they're going to try to say all kinds of stuff and I just need to get, get used to it. So I just come out of that season. So that was it. Um, you know, also a lot of men of God won't say this, but the battle that's within the household, I don't care what anybody says. I don't care who the man or woman of God is. They put, a lot of the times there's a false narrative put out. They put on this lovey dovey stuff. They won't admit that there's battles in the household. Your household is a refining place too. You know, your marriage, the marriage you can, and you can correct me, Art, but you've been married longer than me. It's a, 57 years exactly longer than I've been alive. So like, <laughs> you know, even, even the, getting, keeping the house in order and showing your wife that you love her, that you honor her. And you, this is your, your bride. This is the, the church first church and taking care of your children. I mean that in itself and, and holding that, holding that integrity and standard. I mean, that has its battles too, you know, that has its battles too. So these are places that I try to keep in check. I'm not perfect at it, but my battles are in these type of areas. You know, my battles, Aren't, aren't as I'm not saying that I'm pro, not exempt from it, but I don't battle with the lust and the pornography and the masturbation and all that stuff. I mean, I don't do it because I, I don't, I don't want any of the, I, I don't want the anointing to be siphoned out in the wrong place. I ain't trying to play with Delilah. So I got a warning shot from that. I don't want to tell you when you get warning shots, you don't touch it anymore. Right. So right. I, I, by God's grace and mercy, I don't struggle in those areas, but, um, these other areas is places that I've had to be refined and worked through. And I'm, I'm sure there's something else God will show me soon. So. <laughs> hey, well, you got to learn to take care of that bride. You know, I, I, yeah. you know, I, that's why I try to, how's the bride doing? Cause I always like to call my wife a bride because I want it fresh. You know, I don't want to, you know, people say my old lady, I don't ever say that, you know, I, I bet I, I want to keep on fire for her all my life. 
and, and you need to uh, think about uh, because ministry can. Uh, I'm telling you, uh, the pressure he's under, all the ministry is doing. That's tough sometimes. Yeah, yeah, and so you guys pray for Daniel because we all he needs a, a lot of prayer support because the enemy wants to attack him, you know, yeah. and destroy his ministry and pray for his bride too. <laughs> Amen. Because we ain't perfect people. No. That, that, that's the problem. Uh, yeah. you know, I always tell everybody, said, oh, I have, I, I'm not, I don't ever say, I say, yeah, let me ask your wife. Come on now. <laughs> and, the, and the wife's yeah. like, let me tell you something here. Yeah, you know? yeah. She, that, 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 all, all, our, all, all our stuff is because we're human beings and, and we're all growing in God. Yeah, you know, I had a gal the other day, just yesterday uh, at church Sunday. She says, oh, because she knew me when I was a little younger. She says, Art. Uh, yeah, you're not full of pride anymore, and you're so humble. And I said, oh, <laughs> you know, I, and, and she was saying it, and I said, yeah, 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 and I'm proud of it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but but you, uh, uh, we need prayer because uh, 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 God God's restoring us and using us, and He'll use us, but He's also got to clean us up. Yeah. Yeah, because we're uh, we we have some uh, just some faults in our in our lives, but he he is faithful, you know. And I, I told us that God is working with me. I, I I'd be surprised if I'm not nicer than I was 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this question then: At 80 years old, are you still learning? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do do you ever arrive? Well, well. Yeah, I think if I think it arrived, I, I, I'd be down. I, I, I'd be coming down, you know, if I think, about, you know, <laughs> I, 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 you know, it's a lot, a lot of times, you know, a lot of times you start doing stuff because you've been a long time and, you know, like David will say something, you know, and I'll hear that voice. I said, the kid, but I shut that voice up and said, let me listen to that. Because uh, every time people speak, God speaks out of different people. And when you think you've arrived, uh, uh, it, you're probably going down wow. because you get a big head and pride's entered in, right. you know, it said, I, uh, you know, I says, God, I am better than I used to be, but I'm certainly not perfect. I tell everybody that says, God, uh, uh, God is, uh, 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 loves every wicked person because we're all wicked. If we're comparing us to Christ, right. You may be doing drugs. You may be, uh, you may be a, a prostitute, but God loves you and he wants that off you, cut you to come to him, not but a way where he can clean you up and get you delivered. Right. But, but uh, I says, you know, uh, I, I don't uh, try to say uh, uh, that, that I've arrived yet because uh, I, I think it put me out. I, I think when, when in my backsliding years, I remember saying, Dave, listen to this. I remember about five years of the Lord and I didn't know nothing. But I said, I don't even, I had this thought. I don't even need to read the Bible anymore. I know it so well. <laughs> oh, no. You know, pride. Pride was just sneak. And, and <laughs> as a young man, I probably didn't know how to handle it. Right. You know, because I, you know, I knew it more than other people. You know, so I, I, I started judging myself on a scale. And, and pride. It was pride, you know. And God had to uh, uh, knock that out of me. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah, so I, I remember you were telling me a story when I was at church, Sid Canoe, you were, you were, we were sitting out there and you were talking about the revivals you used to do when you were younger, Yeah, how so many people were coming and stuff. Compared to that time to now, what do you see? Like, how, are there comparisons there? Are you seeing like a, a, a fire reinvigorating? Are you seeing that coming back for you? Like, what are you, what are you seeing? Yeah, I, I, I'm seeing it because it, it was an awesome time. Uh, when I first started, I mean, people come, you know, I, you know, I, I would lead like 1500 people to Christ in a day on these big, uh, on these big crusades on the beach in San Diego. Wow. You know, I'd have, I'd, I'd have, uh, I'd have like three stages on the beach, different locations and bands in every place. And then I'd be giving out, uh, I'd given out money every hour to come in to, you know, for the altar call and then give away free hot dogs. And I have it on the beach and it was just people come radio stations would come and, uh, but I don't, I didn't see that for a long time, you know, and they, they cut me out. And that's why I really went to Africa. Uh, but, but when I started really doing deliverances, uh, 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 of course, a lot of people liked me a lot more when I went doing deliverances. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> now That'll get you persecuted quick. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> wow. Yeah, but uh, but but I, I believe there's a real part. I, I, I'll just share something with you, and I don't know if it's it, it's uh, I don't know the uh, repercussions of it, but I, I believe I've seen something I haven't seen in 32 years on the streets. I'm out in the streets last week, and this gal walks by. Oh, no, we had this big dude. I mean, big uh, uh, black guy come in. And I mean, he had arms like 22 inch arms. And, and he went off on the group. I mean, he was just screaming at us and going at, I, I mean, it was bad, vicious, you know, and, and I stepped in a little bit, but I, 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 I said, no, I don't, I don't want to take it with this guy. But I, I, so I started in the streets. I just stopped and I started just talking to the demons in the high places, not to the people. I, I'm not a, a street scre a screamer. So I just started cursing every demon, taking a control, every, every dynamic forces. I, I just cried, pull them down, pull them down, pull them down, and then sanctify the corner and uh, on the blood of Jesus. And this gal walks by after I finished that on this corner. And uh, I, she had two kids with her. I said, you need prayer? She says, yeah, I need prayer. You know, I, I, I need the peace of God. You know, so I prayed with her. And after giving the three deep breaths of the Holy Spirit, the fire, 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 she went down, bang, she hit the ground. And, uh, and, and I've seen that a lot right there on the corner and they got her. So I went down with her and I'm sitting there watching her, Daniel. And I've never seen this before in 32 years. Gold dust shoots all over her face. Wow. Uh, I go, what? I, I mean, I looked at it, I said, have you got makeup on? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, I was like, I mean, I'm shocked, you know, because I haven't seen that in 32 years, you know? And, uh, and, and I've seen it on other people, you know, right, right. I've, uh, but they're usually, uh, you know, sanctified and holy, you know, really, uh, you know, they're in the Lord a lot. Right, right. It don't happen to a woman not even saved on the street when the Holy Spirit hits them. That's God's grace, man. And, and and that went all over. She got swelled with tongues and everything else. But every week now, it doesn't. It's not as powerful. But every week, gold dust. After we're praying for people on that corner, we're seeing gold dust on the hand, just on the hand, not over the face again. But it, it's, and it takes like like after the Holy Spirit hits them, it doesn't manifest right away. It's almost like it's going through the body, and then maybe. Two or three minutes later, you start to see it start manifest in the hands. Right. So uh, what what I, I'm I, the only thing I'm seeing is maybe God is uh, because that that gets the unsaved world. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, uh, Christians, some of them, they, oh, I don't like that. No, but uh, the unsaved world. So uh, it, uh, I'm expecting God to do something just like I'm praying for you. I pray for I mean, we need a powerful uh, wave of God. And 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 that I have saw this and uh, uh, I'm hoping uh, th that uh, praying, but it's about, about two weeks in a row, but not not as strong as the, the first time, you know, but right. it's starting to come up on, on people. Uh, quite a bit so uh they, maybe god is uh moving on that and uh uh so we'll see you know but uh maybe there's that move what, what are you seeing well i mean outside i mean right now we're seeing a great revival and deliverance but i believe i believe what you're saying about the glory i believe we will walk into a a greater glory where we will see we'll see all the manifestations in one, in one meeting, you know, I believe it'll be deliverance, healing. We'll see the gold dust. We'll see. I was on stage at Greg locks and his wife is on the stage. Tasha, 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 Tasha. I think so. That's how you say her name. Um, but anyway, she's on the stage. I get done preaching and she points to the ground and I look at the ground and there's no birds around. There's no, no pillows. There's nowhere that could have a feather. And there's a full blown feather that's manifest manifested. She saw it manifest in thin air and float down. And uh, when you talk about this stuff, people don't, you know, they don't want to believe it. But, you know, the feathers and the and the and the gold dust that this is all manifestations of of having heaven, the glory realm entering in to the physical. You see what I'm saying? So, like, I think we're going to see more of heaven and the physical marrying one another. It's very common. People don't realize it. But when you re look in the Bible, they said that when Peter was knocking on the door, somebody said, oh, that's his angel. That could just be his angel. It's very common in in that world over overseas or in the Bible that you they saw angels and they knew it. They were like, oh, that that's not really him. That's his angel. Us will go, oh, that's a demon. But no, there's sometimes 
that, that angels are manifesting in our place. You know what I'm saying? So like, that's biblical. So like, there will be, I believe that we will come into a time where this stuff will become commonplace. And I think that's why it says test spirits. Devil can come as an angel of light because it's real. Like as much as the demonic realm is real, God's realm is real. You know, we we're really focused on seeing demons manifest and stuff, but how much more seeing the glory realm of heaven manifest, you see what I'm saying? What would that do? You know? So, Hey, uh, well, that's kind of exciting uh, because you just finished, uh, 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 you know, what I kind of look at, you know, is because if God does something uh, uh, in me, I, I, I really thankful. But when I see it, uh, something else popping up about the same time, this is about, about three weeks ago, you weren't doing that. Uh, uh, so all of a sudden, you know, uh, these things, especially to the world, mean something. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, a lot of people foo-foo it, but uh, but the glory, yeah, we need a, a, a wave of God. I was telling all the guys, uh, you know, about uh, when, when I prayed in Africa, uh, I, I prayed the night before and to prophesy for the African trip. I said, when I got up and I prayed, says, God, give us a sign. If you have favor like this, uh, uh, give us a sign like you did Joshua. Well, uh, when I was in Africa, I had about 8,000 people at the, at the crusade. And uh, uh, a guy was talking, a uh, young guy that I knew and, and I love, but he was in a lot of greasy grace and he thought you'd never had need to uh, ask for forgiveness. Oh. And he started preaching that to Africa. And in that Africa tribe, they just had a war in, the, in that village and they were cutting sheep up. They, they cut up like uh, 700 people with machetes that week. And, and, and a lot of those people were in the crusade. And, and, and he's up there saying, you don't need to have a gun. Well, the Holy Spirit started stirring me up and I went wild. So I ran up and grabbed the microphone and started preaching on forgiveness. And it, as I started preaching uh, up over my head, God put a rainbow around the whole sun and then wow. another rainbow underneath. And, and, and at the same, and I, and somebody sh- told me, I turned around and pointed, God shouted a sign of forgiveness. Seven, 8,000 people were on their face screaming out god has forgiven us and gives us a sign but we that's what we need we these manifestations i've got to increase yeah see that's what i'm talking about you got your little hidden stories in your treasure box <laughs> and you're acting you're acting so humble you know it, you know this guy hey listen guys i'm gonna bring him on my channel i'm gonna get him to unleash everything i'm gonna make sure that, <laughs> i'm gonna make sure i unbox uh unbox grandpa art really good we're gonna get. We're gonna, we're gonna make sure that he gives all the goods. <laughs> you know. You know. You know. Uh, uh, Todd. You know. Just. Uh, uh, you know. You'd be a cage fighter. So I'm on the streets. Of, uh, uh, I'll shout out. It says, "Come on in. And let's enter the octagon. And, and let's uh, let, let's let's go into the God of devil. We'll see who wins. Step into the octagon, folks. <laughs> because it's hey, war. <laughs> Art, can I interject real quick? Yeah. Yeah, Dan, Daniel asked about you uh, ever stopped learning, and I, since he asked that, this has kind of been on my mind. Since I've met Art four or five years ago, he is always looking for the new thing that's that God is doing. He is always looking to improve upon how to do deliverance, how to heal the sick. He's always talking about we need to get these more these more manifestations. We need to figure out what's going on here, champions and. And still to this day, as as much of a veteran as Art is, 30 years in deliverance and supernatural miracle ministries, when I find a good teaching by an old general like Wynn Worley or Derek Prince or Bob Larson, I will send it to Art and Art will still listen to it. And then, and so Art is still always looking to invest in wherever he can learn or grow. And really, I think one of the great reasons why art has gotten so far is because he knows that he's not ever going to arrive and he's continuing to learn, even from people who are a lot younger than him. Yeah. And I think that's a real blessing. I just wanted to add that in there because I think that that's the truth. And that's one of the reasons that God's blessed you so much. Well, well that's why I pay him to pump me up all the time, you know. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you, you know, you, you know. You know what I think you should do, Art? You're 80. You yeah. probably got another 30 years, 40 years left. So yeah, come on. <laughs> you, you, I think, unless Jesus raptures us out of here, but I think you should write some books, man. I think you should yeah. tell you. I think you should write a book. And, you know, if you don't like to write with hand, you can actually do it verbally now. You can actually do verbal to paper now. So 
like, I think you should write a book on some of your experiences so that you, these experiences can, when you're gone, if that's going to ever yeah. happen, yeah, they can pa- continue to pass down like the Derek Prince teachings. Cause you know, you have a lot of you guys don't know this man has such powerful testimonies of faith. He's, he's definitely a general of faith. And uh, that's what I admire about you is your faith, man. So I think you should, I think you should put some of this stuff down in a book. Well, you know, uh, just, just tell you, you know, I, I, I've been wanting to write a book, but uh, I have never done it because I, I just didn't want to uh, shoot it up in there. But God did tell me this year, I meant early in the year, and I had, I, I've started it, but I didn't say, he said, Art, you need to write your book, yeah. or, you know, and he said, and, and he told me that audibly two, uh, two times. And so, so thank you for that encouragement. Maybe I put that on there to, to, to kick me in to, because I'm not naturally a, a writer. Yeah. You know, I, I kind I'm of, not uh, either. You know, I kind of uh, pride myself in my raw, rawness. You know, uh, when everybody wants to be elegant, you know, I like, uh, I like raw, you know, yeah. and uh, <laughs> so, uh, so it's like, you know, that, that isn't, uh, uh, now David, David is, is a great writer. You know, David's a great writer, but that that's that, that's not my forte naturally, but I need to do it, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I just think I think, you know, I picked up impartation from reading books and I know you'll put some great stuff in there, man, and stories. And I just I, I guys, for me personally, when I'm around you, Art, I don't want to say much. I want to listen to you. I want to I want to I want to eat from the table that the Lord's given you, you know, and I want to hear the stories. And I like the, another thing that's wonderful about eating with you, Art, is we can laugh. My, <laughs> my goodness, we can laugh. When I was in, when I was in church, Sid Canoe, I think I laughed. It, I was so happy, full of joy. So I'm I'm just man, I got to do more with you, to be honest with you, because the joy you carry a joy anointing. You do. You carry a strong joy anointing and you know the joy of the lord is our strength and what does it say uh a merry heart is good into the soul or something like that right yeah it's just like that yeah yeah so like we need that and i think with this generation you know art if these young people can see somebody your age with uh, such contagious joy because you know what they're suffering with now the generation z you know what they're suffering with suicide and depression oh it's everywhere that it's worse than it's ever been so we need the joy that you carry in this in this hour you know you know, uh, so, you know, it has happened a couple of times that, that and I went to Nicaragua and then another guy in our church said, we've done this. He says, he says, when we come, uh, we bring joy and authority. And, and, and they think it doesn't really match, but the, it does. It, it does uh, because we need the joy to do what we do for a long time. We yeah. need that, but yeah. we need that authority too. Yeah, I yeah. see I see some preachers because you know I get to run the circuit a little bit. Yeah. They're so they're so sad and depressed, man. And I'm like, why are y'all doing this then? You know, don't go be a car salesman or something if you don't like being a preacher. Why are you gonna be a preacher if you ain't got the joy of the Lord? That's kind of it's kind of crazy. Like, I'm not gonna do God knows Daniel Adams ain't gonna do this unless there's a joy in it. You know, I the joy of the Lord, I have to, I have to enjoy this, you know. And um, I, I know persecution, trials and tribulation, but there's still a joy even in that. It says count it all joy. So there's even in the midst of like, oh, man, I'm worthy of the persecution of Christ. I'm worthy of these tribulations. I'm worthy to be mocked. You know, there's a joy in that because there's a great reward. That's pretty much one of the signs that you're on the right path. I even have I even have witches showing up on my uh, stuff now. So I know I'm on the radar, you know, you're, so you're there, man. <laughs> so, so praise the Lord, you know, let it come, um, for his glory. But, you know, I just, I just know what you carry. I know that you, I don't know why you've been hidden the way you've been hidden. And I think maybe a man like me is, is, is supposed to help unlock maybe you to the world in a way, you know? So if my platform will allow you to get, get people to know who Art Montgomery is and how much you've labored in the field. I mean, you've labored for 30, like, I think what you say, how many years, how, how many years have you labored in the Lord? Well, I'm 50 years this year. I'm 50 years in the Lord. 50 years in the Lord. This man needs to, people need to know who Art Montgomery is. So I'm, and not, not you, but the Christ in you. So I, that's, right, why I, you bet. That, that's why I said, I can't wait to just let you get on, on, on and just like, just pour out. You know, I know you're asking me questions, but I just feel, I feel like, man, I need to ask this guy all the questions that I possibly can. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Well, yeah, you know, and, and, and I know you do, but but uh, 
you know, people come and show it here, Daniel Adams. And, and I, I appreciate every word you said. I, I do that. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's an amazing uh, uh, thing in life. Uh, what, 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 did you, what is your answer to Christians ha can have a demon? You know, could you, uh, uh, you know, it just goes on and on. And, and I love Greg Locke. Uh, yeah. uh, that guy you went with. I He's guess. wild <laughs> too, man. That's a wild, what? that's a wild guy himself. Oh yeah. In a good way. He's wild. Yeah. He's wild. Unapologetic for the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's, he, he's, he's it. But uh, you guys, uh, 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 David sent me, uh, you, you guys, uh, to speak that and one guy gave it a, a talk on that. But how, how do you answer that? Can Christians have demons? Uh, you know, because we're, we're dealing in the church and this is a lot of things you get persecuted on. Yeah. Well, this I mean, it. I take them back to the old Testament. I, you know, look at Israel. So Israel promised people come out of Egypt, go into the promised land. They get in there. And then if you read the Bible and you actually study it, what happens in, to the Israelites? They backslide. They, they lit idols in the land. They let all this stuff go on. And what did God have to do for Israel? He always had to send them a deliverer. So he sent deliverance to them, and he delivered them from the bondage of the Amalekites, the, the Perizzites, the pet, whatever ites you got, you know, the Canaanites. He delivered them from the enemy that had, was invading the land. It's just like us. As we come into Christ, if you read the New Testament, I mean the Old Testament, that is a spiritual uh, understanding of what's going on. We are now we are a in a way we are not we are not Israel, but we are in a way a spiritual Israel. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So like so like what's the difference? I mean, there's really no difference. It's just now everything is seen from the spiritual lens. God's grace has been poured out. There's no need to go and kill everything and do all that. Now the enemy is instead of from without is, is a spiritual enemy without. But the enemy tries to get into this temple. Even if you read about the temple, what happened? The enemy even got into the temple and they started bringing these crazy stuff in there. And they had to, what did they have to do? Cleanse the temple. Cleanse so, the temple. So it's all in the Bible. I don't know why people, Israel is a, is, was the type of Christian. I mean, it is a type of Christian. If you really look in the old covenant, they didn't stop being Israel just because they got invaded by the enemy. They were still, they were still Israel, but they got invaded by the enemy. You know, so like, I don't know why this big deal and this big fight over if Christians can have demons or not. Of course we can. We can let the intruder invade. We can we can give illegal access. I mean, the enemy has it, 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 nothing he does is legal. So he goes through the gates. It says that he climbs up. If you read too in the Bible, it says that he climbs through the gates. He comes in another way. He's a snake. He's a serpent. He's trying to find his way inside the temple. So, I mean, if you read the old, old, old Testament, I mean, it's right there. And then it watch this. Philip of Samaria, Acts 8, he preaches the gospel. People repent of sin and get saved. And after that, what happens? Demons come out. So they had to believe. They had to become a believer first. Oh, come on. That's good. Yeah. They had to become, I like that. I never picked that up, Daniel. Yeah, they believed. And then, then demons screamed out. So he preached Jesus, belief, faith in Jesus. And then the enemy goes ah, out of the body, you know? So, I mean, that's, that's something I use, but man, you know what I've learned though? These people that, that fight it is because they, they know they have it and they don't want to face it. They love doing it in their own strength. It goes back to what you said. It's pride that's causing them to resist the fact that a Christian can have a demon. And it's true. I don't care what anybody says. I've seen probably, I don't know. I'm probably up to in the hundreds of thousands of people, you know, that I've seen that are Chris say they're Christians. They get delivered. So I mean, whatever, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, it, it, it's where, where I deal with it is that mostly if I get a person saved and, and I, I didn't really uh, uh, pick up that because sometimes I, I get a person delivered, but I always get them saved right away. But I think I, in Acts 8, when you pick that up, uh, I like that. He got them saved and the demons come out. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, I, I, you know, I, I've, 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 I've dealt with that a lot, you know, on the streets, you're doing stuff, but I, I think as you're getting them saved and then they come out. So that, that's, uh, I think that's, that's, that's a great one. Watch this one. I'll give you another one that they like to come use. On. 
They say you need to get a person. A person needs to be saved before you cast the demon out of them. Yeah. Acts 16, 16, the, the, the slave girl, she wasn't a believer. And Paul cast the demon out of her. Yeah. So you can cast the demon out of the unbeliever. You know why he cast it out? Because she was she was having the worker of that principality in the region, which was that pythos, python spirit. Python spirit. She, it doesn't say that she believed after that. He just cast that demon out of her so she'd stop having power over that region. So you can cast a demon out of an unbeliever. And some people say you can't, you shouldn't do that, but Paul did it, you know. Uh, I'll bet you 10 to 1, you have some Christians that follow you. Then all of a sudden, uh, that are good, and all of a sudden they start manifesting. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, man. I've had them almost want to fight me, man. Yeah. Hey, uh, you know, I, I I've got a call. I did a deliverance on a guy, and I'm saying he's from uh, Nebraska. He's about six four, policeman. Yeah. Big guy, and he was raised in the occult. Mother raped him when he was four years old. He raised him oh. in, in the Freemasonry, went through the whole Freemasonry stuff. And uh, uh, he said, I did a deliverance. He flew out, he flew in for deliverance. And he said to me, he said, I, and the deliverance went pretty good until I got to get into the demons. Then it went sweet. And I said, this doesn't make any sense. This was a sweet deliverance. And I'm saying this, and then he told me, he said, Art, I, uh, I, uh, I shutted everything down because that demon wanted to kill you. And he said, I've been a Christian 12 years. I, and I have these thoughts of killing my wife and my baby. Wow. And I, I want to get them out so that I'll come back, but you've got to bring enough guys because it was just me and him alone that day. <laughs> Right. But, uh, <laughs> he knew he knew that's yeah, great he knew. I, that I grace was there boy, you know and uh, but that was vicious and and some of these things that they, they get vicious but he has been he says art you know i've been a uh uh, uh i was I, I i wanted to go and i went to catherine crick and uh, uh i was hoping she'd be delivered but didn't work <laughs> so <laughs> so i said well, let me tell you, you get demons this deep in you, you need it. Uh, these are tough. Yeah. yeah, these are tough, champion. You know, there's a chop. So just, uh, you know, come back. So anyway, it should be good. I'm going to try to get Todd Medina uh, and, uh, and about a few of the big guys there with me. He said, then I'll come back, you know. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> That's wild. Hey, uh, is uh, uh, we need, can we open it up for you? You can pray for some people, Daniel. Sure. sure. Uh, uh, is, is Todd Medina there? Are you there, Todd? Because you, you, you had asked for prayer. Are you, are you on? Pull up the chat, David. He was watching. I just need you to, if you give me his phone number or email, I can uh, send him the link. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. You probably... You might, I, <laughs> But yeah, you, you, you ever think about putting it in the uh, YouTube chat for anybody who wants to come on and get prayer? Yeah, yeah we put can it, do that. Put it, yes, do that. The, the Zoom. Put, put your phone number down. No, not the phone number. The oh, Zoom link. What you put in? What do you? Zoom, what do you put? I don't know if David can do it. Uh, you can. I can do it. Oh yeah, the yeah, Zoom. I, I just. There we go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, he, he just. Yeah, he just put it in. So we have the link down there. So. Uh, we can have people come on to receive prayer and art. You just have to uh, take the people out of the lobby, whoever you want to come on to get. Prayer. Okay. Well, break Todd on if he, if he can. Yeah. All right. I did see him. He was on there at one point commenting. And Matthew wants to come in. Matthew and his wife just absolutely love you. You know, uh, uh, you know, the <laughs> uh, if, if Matthew's on, bring him on. Okay. All right. Well, while we're uh, 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 and uh, we got Jessica Sarah, you know her, David? Is that the gal you talked talking about early? No, that wasn't. But she's a regular on your channel. Oh, uh -oh. she is. Okay. Okay. Let, let me just. Vlad, uh, okay, Pastor, we got two people in in the waiting room here. Yeah, yeah. Pastor okay. Pastor Vlad's in the chat. He just said sharing Zoom link in the chat can open it to a lot of bots. Oh no. Well, that's a new one for me. Thank you, Vlad, for for sharing that. <laughs> 
Mm, okay, all right. Okay, I'm, I'm going to bring on Jessica. Okay. I'll make sure Matt gets the link as well. Yeah. Hey, Jessica. Yeah, here, here with Todd. Not yet. Here with Daniel. Hey. I was watching the live the whole time. Okay. okay. I was oh, hoping. She, to uh, she came to uh, church because of you. Oh, I was really? That's what I was telling about. <laughs> oh, wow. Hallelujah. Hello, guys. Blessings. How you doing? God good, bless good. You. So I was hoping I would probably be able to ask for prayer, maybe some guidance as well. Um, I got a supernatural encounter with, uh, I was one of the ones that would say a Christian couldn't have a demon. My husband was like listening to Derek Prince, Win Worley, and he would point out a few things that was like, okay, you probably need deliverance, um, which would make me manifest even more. But one day I, I had a, an encounter with the Holy Spirit here in my house. I started to do deliverance on my husband, not believing in deliverance. It wasn't me, though. It was the Holy Spirit. That's how I got baptized. But since then, I think that I've, I've still um, battled with a little bit of fear. Um, like, I'm always wondering, did I open up a door? Did I do this? Oh, I'm being attacked. Did I open up a door? Like, I'm always constantly like, I guess battling once again with fear. So, yeah. If yeah. there's doubt, if there, they say there's a there's a saying, when there's doubt, cast it out. Yeah. So that means if you're if you're battling with it, then it's probably there. Yeah. What kind of fear? What fear are you battling with? Of opening the door again. Um, of like getting anxiety again, because sometimes like I'll start feeling um, anxious. And that yep. will get me to, um, cause I got delivered from anxiety in 2020. So I start, you know, feeling the heart palpitations. And if I can't worship and make it go away, I'm like, is it bad? So I don't know if I came into like agreement with something or, um, it's just constantly like, just like, uh, doubting, doubting, like, did I, did I, did it come back? Did I allow something in? Did I open up a door? Right. Art, Art did you want me to pray for yeah, yes. could you do that? Yes, yeah. yeah, I'll do I'll do that. Yeah. So you've you 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 live in a repentant life, right? I do. Okay. I'm gonna ask you something now. Yes. Do you have a demon? Maybe. I wanna I, say that's it, it, why it, that's why I'm scared. You know, I, I wanna say yes. Yes, because I am tired of saying that I open up a door. Why am I well let me tell you this? The Bible, I'm gonna give you an answer to why it should be yes. Bible says this, anything in between the words yes and no is of the evil one, is of the enemy. So if you're wavering in your faith, yeah. then that, that means there's something demonic there. Okay. So uh, you're open though. You're willing. Yes, I am very willing. If there's something there, I want it out. All right. Well, let's see. It's not a problem. Position yourself to, to, for freedom, girl. Okay. Let me, <laughs> let me grab a trash can just in case. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fake <big> girl. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, I'll pray for you. I'll, I'll pray for you. You ready? Ready. Okay, say Jesus. Jesus. I'm open. I'm open. And I lose dignity for you. And I lose dignity for you. Any demonic entity? Any demonic entity? That's been afflicting me? That's been afflicting me? And causing me to be fearful? And causing me to be fearful? I command you to leave me now. I command you to leave me now. Now watch. You ready? Ready. All right. Wait. Right now in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost. Fire on your life. That's right. Holy Ghost. Fire over your body now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Come on. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on out of here. You unclean spirit. Holy Ghost, fire on her life in the mighty name of Jesus. Every spirit of doubt, every spirit of unbelief. I know you're there. You got to be there. There's no way you're not there. You've been making this woman wave like a ship in the sea. In Jesus' name, you cannot be there. Come up and out of her in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, listen, by the spirit I'm seeing around you, I'm seeing I'm seeing like it's like four walls around you. You've walled yourself up with doubt 
and the doubt is called, it's almost like it's restricting the, yeah, it's restricting the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You've, you've been self-protecting. These walls must come down. This wall of protection. Yeah. Yeah. These walls have to come down the Lord, because not only is it going to block the demonic from leaving, you're going to block the blessings of the Lord from coming into your life. And it's going to cause discord and division around you because it, the enemy, it's like the Lord's coming and he's pursuing you and he can't break through those barriers that you placed up. You know, I'm even hearing by the spirit, this trust things. There's some trust stuff that built these walls over, over, over life. And there's some things subliminally that's even came in from your childhood in your younger years that you, you that's kind of been buried and it's caused these walls. It's, it's when, when you haven't been believed in, when you haven't, when, when people haven't given you uh, the green light to go. It's like restriction in your life. It's like you've been restricted for so long. Everything's just restricted. You can do this. You can't do that. No, don't move over here. So people's voices have inflicted fear into your life. They've shot darts into your heart and you ate those darts. And this is where this has come from. So I'm going to take a different approach. I command every dart from people's voices that have come into your life, that have penetrated your heart, that have penetrated your soul. By the spirit, I command these darts to come out of her now. In Jesus' name, every dart that she's ingested, I <laughs> command it to leave. Yeah, every dart that was, yep, that was coming to her life. Yeah. Yeah, the darts of life. The people that's supposed to care for you, speaking doubt, speaking fear over you. I break its power now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. You should have felt something just leave you just then. Did you feel that? Um, is there, a I do, I do feel a little bit of a relief. Okay. So we're not done. I command right now, the thing that's on your heart, that heavy weight, that burden that's laid on your heart for so long, I command the spirit of heaviness. You lift off of her now in Jesus name. And I feel like I heard the spirit of the Lord say, she's been fighting depression. You've been fighting it in your own strength. I command this depression to leave her life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Everything's still in her joy. Oof. I felt like I heard the Lord say, I want to restore her happiness. He wants you to have happiness, girl. Yeah. I command this. Yeah. I command the spirit of depression that's tried to come on her. He says he'll give you a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. I command the spirit of heaviness. Come off of it now. Mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I, I feel like I'm hearing the spirit of the Lord say, tell her to let go. Tell her to let go, Daniel. <laughs> Oh, I've been trying to do a lot of things on my own. Yeah, yeah you got to let go. But I'm willing to, to let go. How do I put those walls down? <clears throat> Hold on. I feel like I hear the spirit. I'm seeing by the spirit now. I'm seeing some things. You need to be, the Lord says he wants to dress you in righteousness. So I see you putting, by the spirit, I see him putting a, a, a new dress on you. And you've been dressed. It's looked like you've been in rags. You've been in things that have been torn up. You've been trying to, you're trying to wear old clothes, things that the Lord never gave you. The things of the past, the rags, the beat downs has been weighing on you and been carrying you. So I just pray right now, the Lord, I believe the Lord is saying this. He's going to dress you in righteousness. He's going to put right now, there's a new, there's a new garment that's coming on you. So there's a garment of righteousness that's going to come onto your life. And I want to tell you something now, this, I'm not trying to prophesy bad to you, but I want to tell you something. You're about to come into a hard season and this hard season is going to break down barriers, break down walls. You're going to come into a season where you have to rely on the Lord more than ever. This is going to teach him to father you. You're going to learn about him fathering you in this season. You're going to learn to rely on him. And when I say hard, I mean, hard for self, hard yeah. for the things that have been built up. I'm not talking about catastrophe in your life. I'm talking about for yourself. You're going to have to really deal with self in the season because the Lord is dressing you in righteousness. Yeah. And I heard that he's also saying, I didn't know I was going to be prophesying to you. Yeah. I feel like the Lord is also saying you need to take care of his women. You need to take care of his girls. He's chosen you. you he wants you to mother in the spirit. And as long as you keep battling yourself, as long as you keep fighting anything in the relationship, anything like that, you're not going to be able to come into the mothering and the spirit that he's called you to do. He's, he's wanting this for you. He, need, he has women that are set apart, that are set out there on assignment for you that you've been given assignment to. So I believe the Lord is giving you assignments that your own doubt has kind of blocked. You see yeah. what I'm saying? That season right now because I have, window. I have like a like my own ministry at work and right now that I just been feeling attacked with anxiety depression exactly you nailed it 
Um, I don't feel like ministering. I'm not, I'm usually a happy person. And right now I just feel closed off or I'm just like, why am I feeling anxiety? And like, I just don't feel like this. Sure. Well, let me pray this off of you too. Okay. I'm going to pray this off to you. I command right now, every spirit of witchcraft coming against her, get off of her. Yes. Yeah. Leave her. Every witchcraft spirit. Yeah. That's been wrapped around your head. Every spirit of mind control. I command off of a life now. It's mind control. I command that mind control spirit that's been wrapped around her head, that's been trying to hold her down. I command you to come off of her now. I break your tentacles off of her now. I command you that root in her head. I command that thing to come off of her now. Now, in Jesus' name, everything be revealed and gone. In Jesus' name. Now, speak to me. What are you feeling? Um. I feel good. I feel, I feel the Holy spirit. I haven't felt the Holy spirit in a while. Um, I feel good. <laughs> All right. If you're feeling the Holy ghost, so I'm going to pray for on this one art. And then if you got anything, I'll let you jump in. All right. Okay. okay. So you're ready. So hold your hands out in a posture to receive say, Holy spirit, Holy spirit. I'm ready for a fresh feeling. I'm ready for a fresh feeling. I want to overflow with your goodness. I want to overflow with your goodness. So Lord, so Lord, let your power come. Let your power come. You do speak in tongues, right? I do. All right, we'll wait. Holy Spirit, I thank you for this woman. I pray right now from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Receive the Holy Ghost. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Receive fresh anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Oof, the purification of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Your mouth will prophesy. I thank you, Father, for her mouth prophesying. Yeah. I thank you for the prophetic words as in this season, like I said, that you're going to go through with the breaking down. You will also learn to prophesy even Amen. better, even better, even better. I Father, receive. Yeah. So, Father, I thank you for her life. I thank you for filling her in Jesus name. Go ahead, Art. You know, uh, what, what I, I saw, I saw a, a, almost like a snake rising up by, by your head, like a demon of fear. Yeah, you know, you've got to you've got to shut that thing out. Say this. I'm a champion. I'm a champion. I am delivered. I am delivered. I am set free. I am set free. I rebuke that spirit of fear. I rebuke that spirit of fear. Anxiety. Anxiety. What is your, uh, what are you most fearful about? A, l a lot of things. I mean, I've seen, I've seen my son literally almost like die in front of me like twice because he was choking. So like, I, I, I still like still give him little nibbles and bites because I'm scared of that. Like, I'm always like, are you okay? Like, or we're, we're having dinner and I'm always constantly like, are you okay? Like, I, I need to hear him tell me, yes, I'm fine. And he's even like, I'm taking baby bites. So I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of a lot of things. I'm afraid of going back to my old ways. I mean, I've, I've been two years and I have um, saved and free and delivered, uh, radically saved because I mean, I couldn't quit drinking for anything in my life. Um, I, I guess of that, and, and sometimes I'm just afraid of falling down and just did i did i allow well, something all right say say that. just like me I, me and daniel said earlier on this program we got to know every day without jesus we would we backslide what it is <laughs> and and you've got to trust him with your child you can't let otherwise you'll make him a basket case yeah yeah and you will be a basket case yeah you gotta say i renounce that demon of fear and i trust christ with my child say it I renounce that spirit of fear and I trust you a hundred percent with my child. <laughs> Say, fill me Holy Spirit with your fire, fire, fire. Holy spirit with your fire, fire, fire. Okay. Three big, deep breaths of it. <laughs> Life in you, joy in you, strength in you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I receive it. You receive it. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think we got it there. Yeah. Yeah. You just stay on it. Yes. Remember you're a champion. Yeah. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. You. Amen. 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 
Well, uh, uh, I see uh, uh, Matthew. I'm going to jump him on right here. Uh, Matthew's in here. God bless you. Uh, 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 you know what I think happened, uh, 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 Daniel? I saw, I, I, saw you, I saw Todd, yeah. You, you know what? I think he started manifesting. <laughs> I, 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 I've known him. You know, I watched him and he disappeared. He I, did. I, he, had to, he texted me. He had to get off the highway because he was driving. <laughs> oh, he was driving. He was starting to. Uh, okay. <laughs> but he'll, he'll be on. Yeah, he'll come back, maybe. Yeah, so we'll come back. Yeah. I'm going to put. Uh, I got, uh, I, I got about, on. I got about four minutes, Art. Okay, four minutes. Just, all right. That's all right. Oh, wait, uh, I'm going to put just, uh, okay, right now. Okay. Matthew. There's Todd. I, hey. I just want to. Hey, uh, hey, hey, yeah, hey, hey, so hey. Yeah, hey so Matthew, we, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm gonna have to pray for you, but uh, I just want to introduce him to Todd. Todd, uh, Todd, this is Daniel. Oh, Todd went off again. He went off again. All right, pray for Daniel. Uh, pray for him. You got about four minutes. Yeah, he says. Yeah. What's up, man? We can't, can't hear you, Matthew. Hey, is it on mute? No. Now you're okay. I just want a good word. I don't want any demons out. You don't, you I just don't. want a good message. A good message? What's up, Daniel? What's happening, man? God bless you. Hey, God bless you, man. Uh, just want some of that Jesus juice. All right. I hear you, man. Let's pray for you. So, Father, I thank you for this man of God. You heard what he yes. said. He wants a fresh touch, a fresh anointing yes. of your glory. I pray right now from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet that he'll be filled Afresh, right now, Jesus' name. Yeah, yeah, your glory, drink. I see it, Lord. I pray right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> yeah, just fill him up, Lord, in Jesus' name to overflow. There you go, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May your tent pegs expand, man, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hey, there's something I I want deliverance for. Okay. Okay, so this one's kind of, I've been trying to get deliverance for, um, and I, trying to crack the code for it is, uh, is night terrors, right. you know, bad right. dreams. And um, I've prayed about this. Um, I've talked to Art about it, and I'm thinking, I got to the point where I was like, well, you know what, I'm just going to basically do what the opposite of the dream says, or what the devil, he only can catch when I'm asleep. But I've right. seen I've seen people been delivered. So sure. It gets me to the point where I'm thinking, hey, let me there's... let me ask you something. Do you have anything from your childhood in your house? <laughs> I don't think so. Let me think real quick, though. Um, so, so here's what I, here's what I, here's what I'm feeling. If pay it just if you've been go, going, have you been through tried to be delivered from this before? Yes. So now look for items. Look for items that could be open doors to the dream realm. Because sometimes what can happen is you can have something that's like an idol in the room. You might not know it. It could come from your childhood. It could come from family lineage. I don't, I'm just saying, I've seen it. And it'll open, it'll open up the dream realm sometimes. Okay. Yeah. I don't necessarily know. Sure. But I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you generally anyway. Yeah, no, I'm trying to think on that area. Cause I, when I mean, when I came to Jesus, I was, I was homeless, you know, so I don't think I had anything sure. left from sure. my childhood. Sure. Well, but, there could be, there could be some trauma things. There could be a lot of stuff here. I don't, I don't know. Cause I don't know you that well, but, um, but let's just pray. Really, lot, let's, Daniel. let's, yeah. Let's just pray really fast. <laughs> yeah. Let's just pray really fast. And then I'll talk to Todd really fast. And then I got to go. Okay. Okay, cool. So, let, let me pray. Father, I thank you right now. I command right now, everything that has entered into him, that has been causing these night terrors. I break its power now. I command it to come up and out of him completely in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Anything that's wrapped around his head in the spirit that's attracting these dreams, I command it to go in Jesus' name. Any spirits of fear that had entered into him through his childhood, I command it to be broken off his life now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I command also any python spirit that's been wrapped around him and restricting him from walking forward into his call and destiny. I command that he'd be cut off of that snake. I command complete freedom in Jesus' name. And the Father, the Holy Ghost upon you. All right. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Love you, Matthew. Hey, thank you. Hey, love you guys. Hey, thank you very much for prayer. Of course, brother. God bless you. Hey, thank you, man. Amen. Todd. Hey, thanks, Art. Daniel. <laughs> Daniel. What's up, man? I appreciate man? you. I appreciate you, sir. This is an answered prayer. Come on, man. Gentlemen on here. Whoo. <laughs> so you used to be a cage fighter, huh? Yeah, yes, sir. For like 30 years. Did you fight in the UFC? Yeah, UFC five was my first pro fight. I, I thought I know I know your name, Todd Medina. Yeah, yeah who did you I, fight? Uh the first one was uh the super heavyweight kickbox champ, and then I fought the Canadian Olympic wrestler. Oh wow. Um, I got the M1 belt. I got like eight, nine belts, world champion belts. Uh, been doing this forever. So, wow. so talking with you, like this is like serious and answered prayer to have both of you gentlemen on this at the same time. Cause you know, that there's only a handful of us that understand this. Hold on champions. You were coached to Carlson Gracie senior fight. team. Yeah. I'm his first American, uh, on the team. Oh, Wow. You were you you were the first you were a UFC champion? No, no, no. But I, I'm an M1 champion. M1. Got, oh, okay. I got Fedor's. I got Fedor's belt. Ah, uh, come on now. I, I'm looking you up right now. It's crazy because people would ask me like, "Hey, what are you gonna do when you get done fighting?" And then I was fortunate enough to meet Art. I mean, that it's like I, I couldn't ask for a, a better mentor, a better yeah. uncle to get me into this. And then so I'm I'm glued to him like like nobody's business. Um, cause like you say, art, art will go up to anybody and start doing deliverance or whatever. And that's a, it's a big blessing to me. So look, you guys know I'm on here with two legends now because I, <laughs> I was, I was in the MMA realm and I was in the K I mean, and I was in the, uh, I was, in, I'm in the Christian realm. So I got to look at that two legends right here, man. This is, this is how, how awesome is this? Man, I, I got, honor both you two. Come on, man. This is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, man. Well, I can't, you want me to pray for you? Okay, so please check this out. Art's been art, art's been awesome with this. Um, I can get a deliverance, and almost twelve hours later, and I've got a bunch of witchcraft being done on me right now. Like I just get tormented again, and the whole thing—it's just like it's almost like clockwork, and I, I just can't get rid of this thing. Right. That's making any sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. We can pray and see what happens. Yeah, that I would appreciate it. Yeah, just have your heart open, and I'm going to pray. Amen. Oh, Are you ready? Yes, sir. Father, I thank you right now for Todd. I command right now, Holy Ghost, fall on his life. From the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Yeah. Anything hiding in this man, I command you to reveal yourself now. Fall on his body in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm seeing by the spirit, your stomach. I command that thing swimming around in his stomach. Come on. Come on. Every, yeah, everything's swimming in that man's stomach. You come up. Come up and out of him now. Yeah, 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 yeah. That thing in his belly. Come on. I've spotted you by the spirit. You can't be in this man anymore. It's like a black serpent. I command you to come on out of him now. Yeah, this witchcraft. You ain't going to. Yeah, come on. Come on. Come on up and out of them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everything go. Mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Come out of him. Fall on his body. Yeah. Holy Ghost. Fall on his body. <laughs> hey what what was your fighting nickname el what el tibaron what does that mean it's a shark hmm. okay so i want you have you ever you've renounced the identity of that already right no sir actually okay let's renounce the identity of that shark okay because you're, yes, no you're no longer a shark you're a warrior for yeah. jesus oh man yeah. i, I I renounced the, the the name of the shark, the nickname of the shark, anything yeah. to do with the shark, El Tibaron. Yeah, I could say I come out of agreement with it. I come out of agreement with it. I'm a I'm a warrior of God. I'm a warrior of God. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name.
Watch this. I command that demon that came in through that nickname, that shark. Yeah. He's not a shark. Yeah. I command right now. Every demon that came in associated with that identity, that fighter identity outside of the kingdom of God, I command you to come off of them now. I break every legal right, everything associated with that that came in through his past. I bury right now that name. I bury it. He will now rise again with a new name in Jesus' name. So right now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, everything associated with that locked into his past, come off of him now. Yeah. Come off of him in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Put on his body. Come all the way off of him. Yeah. Everything. Everything locked across his shoulders. Come off of him now in Jesus' name. Anything that's called pain in his joints, any spirits of pain that come in with that shark stuff, I've commanded off now in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah, I, I hear by the spirit has been gnawing at your joints, gnawing at your joints. I command right now every spirit that's been gnawing at his joints, you come up and out of him now. Yep, come on. Yeah, every spirit causing him pain, gnawing at his joints, come off of him now in the mighty name of Jesus. Is something going on with your arm? Man, yeah, Daniel. Yeah, come on off his arm. Come on, come on. Yeah. Put on his arm right now. Mighty name of Jesus. Yeah, work your way out of his hand. Work your way out. Come on, all the way. All the Sorry. way. Aye. Yep, all the way. Yeah. Mighty name of Jesus. Come all the way off of him. Yeah. Yeah, come in. Fire on your arm right now in Jesus' name. Burn it off. Yeah, all the way. All the way. You good? Yeah, yes, sir. So, what was in that arm that was, was it, were you having pain in that arm usually? It just started maybe like two months ago, Daniel. Wow. It's a spirit. And they've been like locking up. Like yeah. my hand do this number. Not you know, I've done a several deliverance on him. And, and I, I guess I never thought about asking his nickname of fighting. Wow. I never, I, you guys don't know that, but I just didn't even thought of him. That, that was good. Yeah. <laughs> Because it was, it's a fighter thing, you know. Us fighters, we yeah. we take on the identity of these nicknames. It's what we pride ourselves in. So we kind of got to bury that, you know. That was good. Daniel. That's crazy. My my shoulders have been coming in. My arms have been getting. Yeah. This. I saw it. I saw. I saw by the spirit. It's it was around your arms, down your leg, and then I saw gnawing in the spirit yes, from sir. that from that shark gnawing on your body. Yes, causing, sir. Ca causing pain. Yeah. I don't think you, you you shouldn't have that pain anymore. It should be gone. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Thank you. All right. When I come back out there, we gotta hang out. I gotta meet this man. Yeah, Not we please. gotta bring him out. He's on fire. Uh, I, nah. I I mean, uh, we gotta have uh, uh, ex MAA guys on fire. Hey, oh, maybe I, maybe I can let him whip on me a little bit, man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but we we can do that. Yeah, yeah you, you know us, man. We like to beat each other up for fun, so it's all right. Absolutely. I'll take I'll take a few M1 uh I'll take some Muay Thai kicks to the to the head from you. It's all right. I was playing. I won't tell you that. Don't kick me in the head. <laughs> no kicks to the head. Uh, man, hey, Daniel. So to meet you. Hey, yeah. Daniel. The first time I, I, I got called up to do a deliverance on him, I didn't know him. He called up and they said he's gonna commit suicide. We don't come for deliverance. And I I tried to get some people to help me because I didn't know who he was. I just right. knew he was an MAA professional fighter. I said, well. Oh, he's real me. deal. This ain't a yeah. little fighter. This no, is the no. real deal. <laughs> way. So, so I said to myself, nobody would come help me. So I said, what the heck? This is a good way to die anyway. <laughs> and it worked out good. <laughs> but those demons of witchcraft got him anger that he thrived on. No. All right. Why are you getting around all us ex-MMA guys, bro? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, he, he knows uh, Mike Tyson. I, said, I want to get Mike Tyson delivered. Oh, you know him? 
You know him? He does. Yeah. Todd knows him. There's, there's a lot of guys that, that you I know like. Dana, that. You know Dana, too, don't you? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, you know, sir. Ma- you know Matt Sarah? I, I've met him once or twice, but I wouldn't say I necessarily know him. Yeah, we need to get a lot of people saved in there. <laughs> yeah, for real. For real. Hey, you know Roy McDonald? He's saved. You know that, right? Yes, sir. You know what I would like to do? Because I got Roy's number. I, I would like, I need, I, one day I would like to put a thing on art where we get all these fighters, man, that me, that, that are Christians. And Come on. We could, we could rock. I believe we could rock the MMA community, man. I really do. Yeah. Hey, maybe we ought to think that. We've got to get in there. Yeah. Daniel, as much as um, Joe Rogan's not a believer, I think he, w- he would get behind it. Oh, we, I, you know, Joe? Yeah. Yes, sir. I think, yeah. Yeah. But that's what I like. But see, here's Joe. So here's the thing. He's open spiritually. So I think we could, like you said, I think you could probably move him a little bit. That'd be good. Yeah. With the, like, this is for real talk right now. This is something. Oh, this is, this is, this is a hundred, this is a hundred percent. I mean, we could put a crusade on, we could do a lot of things right in y'all's area. Cause you're out there in what you're out there in his area. Yes, sir. Man, we could do that right out there in California, man. You got me thinking now. Please, please. I think like, we should. Maybe maybe it's God's birth or something, man. You know what, Art? We're gonna talk. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to you after this. And uh, now that we're connected with Todd, I'm coming out there. I think in February, Todd. Oh, um, perfect. We can set something up. I'll I'll hang out with Art. I'll try to get a little extended time, Art. Not just the days that I'm preaching, but I'll try to get some extended time, and we'll plan. We'll sit down and plan something. Awesome. Come on. Yeah, we yeah, can do. A, I mean, but, this could be big. Todd, we could do a lot. We could do a lot with this, man. There's a lot we could do with this. Ooh, I'm looking forward to it. I, yeah. I'm more fired up about, and I, I guess I should be the, the Lord than I ever have been for fighting. Like I completely put that in the back seat. This is like, I'm all in. Wow. I love so, it, man. I love it. I'm, I, you know, my prayer is like, cause I know, I know the fight world, man. And it's a lot of pride in there. There's a lot of yeah. pride. There's a lot of fatherlessness. There's a lot of hurt. You know, and people oh. use the people use the fighting to cover all that stuff up. You know that. Yeah, and, we're on the same page, you and I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so Uncle I, Art, he's all Uncle Art's all in it. He knows. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I think we're on to something here, Art. Yeah, Todd, it's an honor, man. Really, it's my honor. It's my honor to meet you. You know, being I come I come from the background a little bit, not as much yeah, as you. Sure. This I, I know. Had, I had some fights. I had five fights, but you know. Yes, sir. Um, and I did some jujitsu competitions and stuff, but like, not like you though, not by no means. No, no, no. We're, we're one of the same. So, and I appreciate you and, and I honor both of you and I, I value your time. Wow. 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 Yeah. Hey, love peace. you, man. We're, we're going to talk. We're going to talk. Okay. Peace. Thank you very yes. much. Yes. Love you, man. Love you. All right. Thank you for allowing me to come on, sir. Oh, you're awesome, man. He's on fire, Daniel. It, it's good. I mean, I don't hang with guys that are not on fire. I mean, no. I, I love everybody, but the guy's on fire, and he's one of them. He, no, he, the, he'd be in for it. I believe Todd's got a big key, so I think we should help him turn it. <laughs> thank hey, you. man. Thank come you. on. Thank you. Yeah, man. Look hey, to Daniel, meeting. thanks yes, for coming sir. on. I appreciate you, man. That's great. Hey, guys, if you didn't get prayer, we're sorry, but uh, I hope you enjoyed the interview. I think I, we learned some good stuff. People got free. It was awesome. And Daniel says he, uh, we'll do it again. Amen. We'll do it in uh, really soon, like really soon. I'll have you on. I'm going to bring you on. Sounds and great, you know, man. Listen now, when I bring you on, some of these other people are going to want to bring you on. So be ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, Art's about to come out for real. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, look, man, I love you, man. Thank love you. Love you, bro. I, I honor the opportunity. I really do. Nice meeting you, Todd. And, My pleasure. Uh, and uh, we'll talk soon, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. Both of you. All right. All right. God bless you. God, you. God bless, guys. God bless. See you. Hey, Amen. That's good. That's good. That's good. Hey, guys. I appreciate everybody. I appreciate Todd. Come in. David, looks like we hooked up something good. Yeah, it was good. I don't know if you saw, but um, uh, Pastor Vlad from Hungry Generation was in the chats. Uh, I don't know if he's still watching, but he was he commented on there, so. That's oh, he cool. did. Well, that's, uh, uh, yeah. you know, Pastor Chad, you know, I, 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 I picked that young, uh, that young bug up with a way to the beginning. I didn't, you remember, I've always talked about him. He's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's good. 
Yeah. That's good stuff. Well, since we have a little bit of an audience here, you want to uh, advertise the conference we're going to be doing in October? What'd you say? You want oh, yeah. to tell, tell our audience about the conference? Oh, oh yeah. Hey, hey, we're going to do a conference in uh, Salem, uh, 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 New Hampshire. Uh, Massachusetts. Uh, Ma <laughs> oh, we're gonna, it's going to be in Massachusetts, huh? Yeah, so uh, so we're gonna the conference itself is gonna be in Manchester, New Hampshire, and we're gonna be uh, training on October 28th and 29th. Art Montgomery, Ben Wisen, our pastor, uh, and we have a couple of other people. We're gonna be training you how to cast out demons, heal the sick, and preach the gospel. And then on Monday, October 31st, we are doing an outreach in Salem, Massachusetts. So Art Montgomery is going to be casting demons out on the streets in Halloween in Salem, Massachusetts. The witchcraft, the witchcraft table of uh, uh, of the United States. <laughs> hey, Art, can I go with you on this trip? Yeah, you can go. We got to get our tickets. Um, yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get our tickets. God's coming. God's coming. Um, yeah, and well, it would, like we talked, it's not for sure yet, but Daniel might be able to be there Monday and Tuesday. So just when you get your tickets, so leave a little extra leeway in case we can extend the revival for a few extra days. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. We can, get, we can get Derek to come do some video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we do. We we do that. We get it all all set up. Yeah, it'd be good. Yeah, I think. I, I and and you got a good contact with with Daniel. That that's awesome. Yeah. You know, and he he, he likes you, David. Yeah. Well, I'm glad. Yeah, I'm, I'm really. I was really honored to be on your tonight. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It'll be good. All right. All right, all right. champions. Thanks, guys. Thanks, I love you guys. Thank you. All right. Blessing is everyone. Thanks, David.